Hi, I'm Carol Park, a member of the California Writers Club Peninsula Branch that meets in Redwood City during normal times and now via Zoom. The germ in my story comes from the true tale of my ESL student. I've lived in Japan and know how very difficult it is to speak another language. So with appreciation to the many who do, here's my tale titled, you call them drips? I hear the Blossom Festival is on. Carl held his cell phone to his ear and spread his big boned frame on his chair, narrowly filling his superintendent's cubbyhole of the aging apartment complex. Hey, let's ride our bikes to Fresno tomorrow, proposed Rob. Yeah, early is good. People call my cell anyways. Meet me at the usual, two o'clock. You got it. Carl clicked off and handled emails. 12% late penalty. He typed back to a tenant. Then he walked to the grounds. Shrubs needed trimming and a dead squirrel lay under one. He'd call the gardeners. Akiko back in apartment 139 noticed a drip from the ceiling as she scrambled eggs. Okasan, Mite, her son Kotaro called to her. Look, Ite, look. She waited for him to repeat the English word before she admired what her son had done. That's good. She hoped bits of English would help in preschool. She put Kotaro in his high chair and wiped the drips coming from the joint between ceiling and wall. When her husband Shingo came down, she pointed them out. I'll call the super tonight, too early now, Shingo said. He was the one who did such interactions. People's impatience with Akiko humiliated. Shingo hurried off for his research job and Akiko revisited the watery wall in between scrubbing, sweeping, and answering Kotaro's demands. She timed the drips. Every 15 minutes, 10 drips. Then the next time, 15 drips. Then a new place leaked. She positioned cookie sheets where water fell and took her son for a walk. On returning, more water. But she didn't want to disturb Shingo at work. When he returned that night, he called the supers, but no answer there. He left a voicemail. This is Nakata, apartment 139. Water drips on the wall. When Carl arrived at the apartment Friday morning, he tended to a disgruntled American tenant, checked the grounds and heard Shingo's voicemail. Only drips, he thought. I've got a lot to do before 1.30 and it's a job for someone else. He called the plumbers, but they couldn't come till Monday. He left a voicemail of the Nakatas rather than dropping in because he knew he made Mrs. Nakata nervous. So it was time to go. When Shingo arrived at 8 p.m., Akiko barely greeted him. I'm seeing the three foot spread of ceiling where water seeped through, he asked. Didn't the super come? No, he said plumbers on Monday. Shingo got only the super's voicemail. More water, please come soon. He shook his voice and said to his wife, he's a fool, Akiko agreed. On Sunday evening, Carl brooded over Shingo's second message, a hint of urgency there, but no panic or anger. Carl decided to wait till Monday and normal work hours. At 9 a.m. Monday, Carl rang the door. He stepped around cardboard boxes piled with toys, towels, and books before entering the kitchen. A flood fell from five feet of ceiling, he cursed. How did it get this bad? Drips Thursday, Friday more. Saturday more and more. Sunday waterfall. Kotaro stuck a finger right through the wall. Shit, said Carl, imagining the owner's fury. Excuse me, asked Akiko. Sorry, I swore. I want to learn the word for mad. I say sheet, right? No, more like shit. Both Akiko and Kotaro repeated, shit and Carl found room for a chuckle.